This is the first of the revision videos for the Further Maths Unit 4 of the WJEC specification. And in this video we will be looking at the work on trigonometric equations. The specification for the module says that we need to be able to solve trigonometric equations using the factor formulae using the t equals tan half x substitution and that we should be able to make find the general solution of trigonometric equations. So first of all considering the general solution of trigonometric equations there are three cases that we need to be able to handle. We need to be able to find the general solution of sine theta equals sine alpha, the general solution of the equation cos theta equals cos alpha, and the general solution of the equation tan theta equals tan alpha. And we need to be able to do that either in degrees or in radians. The then the factor formulae that we need to be familiar with which are the formulae for sine A plus sine B as 2 sine A plus B over 2 cos of A minus B over 2 and then similar results for sine of A minus sine of B cos of A plus cos of B and cos of A minus cos of B and the results for the factor formulae are actually in your formula booklet. The t equals tan half x substitution. If t is tan half x, then tan x can be written as 2t over 1 minus t squared. Cos x can be written as 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And sin x can be written as 2t over 1 plus t squared and the formulae for cos x and sin x are in the formula booklet. If you can't remember the formula for tan x then all you need to do is remember that tan x is always the same thing as sin x divided by cos x and that will straight away give you the fact that tan x is 2t over 1 minus t squared. When you're using the t equals tan half x substitution to solve an equation, you need to remember that it won't find solutions of 80, 180 degrees. And when you complete a solution or think you finished a solution using the t equals tan half x substitution, it's therefore very sensible just to check whether 180 degrees is a solution of the original equation. If it is a solution of the original equation then you will need to amend your initial solution by including 180 plus k360 if you're working in degrees or pi plus 2k pi if you're working in radians. If 180 degrees isn't a root of your initial solution, then your initial solution is correct and you're home and dry. So we'll ha now have a look at a couple of examples. The first one, we are going to try and find the general solution of the equation cos theta plus cos 3 theta plus cos 5 theta equals naught. Now since we've got a whole lot of cosines being added up together, it makes sense to try and use the factor formulae for this question. If we start off by considering cos theta plus cos 3 theta, then the factor formulae applied to that gives me cos theta plus cos 3 theta is 2 cos theta plus 3 theta over 2, cos a theta minus 3 theta over 2, so in other words, that's 2 cos 2 theta, 
cos of minus theta. But remember, cos of minus theta is exactly the same thing as cos theta. So we've got cos theta plus cos 3 theta equals 2 cos 2 theta cos theta. So if we try and make use of that on our equation, the equation cos theta plus cos 3 theta plus cos phi theta equals naught is going to become 2 cos 2 theta cos theta plus cos phi theta equals naught. And that really is no simpler to solve than the original equation. So in that case, our use of the factor formula there didn't help. On the other hand, if we use the factor formula to consider cos theta plus cos phi theta, then cos theta plus cos phi theta is two lots of cos theta plus phi theta divided by 2, cos of theta minus phi theta divided by 2. So that's two lots of cos 3 theta times cos of minus 2 theta. But remember, cos of minus 2 theta is the same thing as the cos of 2 theta. So we've got cos theta plus cos phi theta is the same thing as 2 cos 3 theta cos 2 theta. And if we try and use that to solve the equation, then cos theta plus cos 3 theta plus cos phi theta equals naught. The cos theta plus the cos phi theta becomes 2 cos 3 theta cos 2 theta plus the cos 3 theta from the middle of the equation must equal naught, and we've got a factor of cos 3 theta, which will certainly mean that we can make progress in solving that equation. So, let's see what our final solution for this equation might look like. So, using the factor formula, we know that cos theta plus cos phi theta is equal to 2 cos 3 theta cos 2 theta. So the equation now becomes 2 cos 3 theta cos 2 theta plus cos 3 theta must equal naught. Factor out the cos 3 theta. So we've got cos 3 theta times by 2 cos 2 theta plus 1 equals naught. So we've either got cos 3 theta equals naught, or cos 2 theta equals minus a half. The question doesn't make it clear whether we have to use degrees or radians, so it's up to, uh, to ourselves to make that choice. In this case, I'm going to use degrees. Now, cos 3 theta equals naught, well, I know that naught is the same thing as the cosine of 90. So I've got cos 3 theta is the same thing as cos 90. So that means that 3 theta is either 90 plus k 360 or minus 90 plus k 360. That's just using the general solution of the trig equation cos theta equals cos alpha. So we can say that 3 theta is plus or minus 90 plus k times 360, where k is an integer. Divide through by 3, that gives me theta equals plus or minus 30 plus k times 120. Now minus a half is the same thing as cos of 120 degrees. So the second little equation that we've got there can be written as cos 2 theta equals cos of 120. So that means that 2 theta is either 120 plus k360 or minus 120 plus k360. In other words, we've got 2 theta is plus or minus 120 plus k360. Divide through by 2 gives me theta is plus or minus 60 
plus k times 180. We should, at this stage, just remember to say that k must be an integer. And that will finish our solution off for us. The second example we're going to consider is one where we have to use the t equals tan half x sub substitution. So we've got to use substitution t equals tan half x to solve the equation, find the general solution of the equation, 3 sine x equals tan a half x. So if we've got t equals tan half x, then sine x is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared. So the equation can be rewritten as 3 times 2t over 1 plus t squared equals t. In other words, 6t over 1 plus t squared equals t. If we multiply up by 1 plus t squared to clear the fractions, we obtain 6t equals t plus t cubed. Collect all the terms on one side. That gives me naught equals t cubed minus 5t. Common factor of t, so we've got naught equals t times t squared minus 5, which tells me that t is either 0 or plus or minus the square root of 5. So we know that the value of tan half x is either 0 or root 5 or minus root 5. If we start off with the solution tan half x equals 0, well 0 is the same thing as the tan of naught. So we can say that a half x, the general solution of that equation, is going to be a half x equals naught plus k times 180 degrees, if we're using degrees again, which gives me x equals naught plus k times 360 when we multiply up by 2. So we've got x equals k times 360 degrees is the general solution of tan half x equals nothing. Moving to the case where we have tan half x equals root 5. But if we use inverse tan on our calculators, we will find that root 5 is the same thing as tan of 65.91 degrees. So the equation we've got is tan half x equals tan of 65.91. So the general solution of that equation is a half x equals 65.91 plus k times 180 times through by 2 gives me x equals 131.8 plus k times 360. And the final possibility we've got is that tan half x is minus root 5. And minus root 5 is the same thing as the tan of minus 65.91. So the general solution of that equation is a half x equals minus 65.91 plus k times 180 times through by 2, we get x equals minus 131.8 plus k times 360 degrees. At this stage, we should just remember to check whether 180 degrees is a solution of the original equation or not. Well, if x is 180 degrees, 3 times sine x is simply naught. On the other hand, if x is 180 degrees, we've got tan of a half x is tan 90, which is undefined. So certainly we've got 180 degrees is not a solution of the equation 3 sine x equals tan a half x. And that means that the solutions that we've already found do provide the complete solution. So there's our complete solution and as before we need to just remember to write down that k must be an integer.